14th chapter of Genesis. And I want to, the 14th chapter, and I want to look at verse 14. Verse 14. Genesis chapter 14, verse 14. As we read the text. And when Joe, when Abram heard his brother was taken in captivity, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them into Dan and divided against them he and his servants by night and smote and pursued them into Hobah which is left hand of Damascus and brought back all the goods and also brought again his brother Lot and his goods and women also and the people and the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Chaldemore and the king that were with him in the valley of Sheva which is the king's dale. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which have delivered thine enemies into thine hand. And he gave him tithes of all. Once again, we see God's covenant man having to deal with conflict. Because of his lot, uh, nephew, his lot, lot, his nephew. Last week, we discovered that Abraham allowed Lot to travel uh, with him in the midst of that conflict. We see Lot's heart being revealed. Rather than staying connected and unified with Abraham, Lot not only took the best and most valuable land, but he totally separated from Abraham. Once again, we see that Lot is become engaged in the conflict. This time, not only himself, but his family, his goods are taken hostage by the enemies in the plain and the lands. And so last week we saw that as community, Lot began to travel with Abraham as God had told Abraham to go to a land that he would show him. And in taking Lot, we found out that there was a tremendous conflict that rose up against Abraham's cattlemen and uh, Lot's cattlemen. And so uh, they decided it was best to um, separate. But we did also understand that when we looked at this, this separation should not have been one of isolation. This separation should have been one so that they could uh, order and put order in their houses so that they could continue to work together. But as we look at the text, we see that Lot, um, because of his own ambitions, because of his own desires, Abraham so much desired to avoid conflict that he told Lot, he says, listen, you, in order to, to, for us to have harmony and peace, you take the land that you want and I'll take what's left over. And we understand that, again, God makes covenant with Abraham because God wants to bless the nation of Israel. God wants to bless the people of God. God wants to bless the community. He wants to bless the nations. He told Abraham, out of thee, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. And so, a lot did not understand the value of being in kingdom community and connected to a covenant leader. And so the Bible says that one, once the conflict took place that Lot separated himself and took the land or the plains that were plush over against Sodom and Gomorrah. It is interesting that when we look at the text as we study it, we also see that Lot 
in his dissension away from Abraham became isolated in that land that he no longer had fellowship, communion, and relationship with Abraham. Uh, and this boggles my mind because uh, certainly if you have gone on a journey with a community and you are joined with a man in covenant, it certainly would not be wise for you to split off from that person and alienate yourself from the covenant of God and the community of God as Lot did. Well, you said, why, do we, why, uh, why did you say he alienated himself? Because that in the, when you read the text, it says, the more Lot stayed in the plain of Gomorrah and Sodom, the closer he moved to um, Sodom and Gomorrah. It means he moved away from the covenant man. He had drifted away from the covenant community and had taken his family to a foreign community or the community which we know today as Sodom and Gomorrah. And it is interesting that many today have taken on the spirit of Lot, that somehow we've been allured or we've been seduced by the spirit of this world. And, and somehow uh, the, the kingdom community and the covenant community that God has established is no longer appealing to many people who have drifted away because they have lost their connection with kingdom community. Community. See, Lot may not have intended to have drifted that far, but as we read the text, we find out that Lot never returned back to connectivity or connection with Abram from the time that he left. As you read the story on, you'll find out that Lot continued to move away, drawn away by the, uh, the, the effects of Sodom and Gomorrah, drawn away by the allurement of the whatever was going on in that city. And he drifts away to the point that it ends up being problematic. We know that the covenant of a man, Abraham, took responsibility for Lot and his well-being and united with his house and took his trained men and went and rescued Lot. As we read in the text, Abraham, the next time after uh, Lot leaves Abraham, the next time we read about Lot, he's in trouble again. Last week when we read about him, he was at odds with Abraham, being separated from Abraham, taking the best land. And the scripture tells us today that Abraham heard that his brother Lot had been taken in captivity. So now here Lot is, as we said last week, as he has drifted away from uh, kingdom community, as he has drifted away from God's community, has now become ambushed by the community that he moved in. He was so caught up in the plushness of the valleys beyond or beside Sodom Gomorrah that he did not recognize the enemies that lurk within that valley. And so many times when we are being allured away from kingdom community, when we, we uh, disengage ourselves from our spiritual commitments and our commitments to the Lord, we don't realize that the things that we are going after, after uh, many times have with them enemies. Things look good, but the enemy is in the camp. Things look better. Somebody said the grass looks greener on the other side. And many people have sh drifted away from kingdom community because the grass looked greener on the other side. The Bible says that the next, as we read, the next time we see Lot, Lot and his family had been taken hostage by the enemies in that territory. Uh, he has become, uh, he, is, he has taken on the responsibility and now he has been uh, led captivity, into captivity. And we know that because of Abraham's relationship with God, because Abraham is responsible for the community, because Abraham has been assigned this responsibility by God, he takes responsibility for Lot. And he takes his house, who is united, and takes his trained men, and they go to rescue Lot. 
See, uh, even though Lot had pulled away from the community, even though Lot had went out on his own, Abraham being the covenant man still would not leave Lot to his own destruction. In the midst of all that Lot had done, Abraham was still willing to go back and rescue Lot after what he had done. What is interesting that after the rescue uh, that, that so Abraham takes his men and he leaves um, and goes out and the Bible says he grabs Lot, he gets Lot, he rescues Lot and brings back not only Lot but he brings back his wives and his stuff. Everything that Lot allowed to get destroyed while he was in that plane, um, uh, Abraham used his resources and used his power to go back and rescue Lot out of the situation. And you have to understand also that, that this is very key in terms of how we see community because when we drift, when we get out there, when our enemies want to take over, when our enemies want to take us into captivity, it is important to understand that God is redeemer God, that God is a God of restoration, that he's not going to leave you in the hands of your enemy. He, he desires and will rescue you out of that situation. The Bible says that Abraham went and got Lot, got his wives, got his, his servants, got his stuff and rescued him and brought him into a place of deliverance. And that's why the kingdom community exists because it is a place of deliverance. It's a place where God wants to rescue us. It's the place where God wants to restore us. It's the place where God wants to give us peace. It's the place where God's protection is. God's protection is over his his community. Now, here's something that is interesting. And what is interesting about this situation is that after Abraham rescues Lot, Lot never is mentioned again until he gets in trouble again. When you read the text, after Abraham rescues Lot. You would have thought that Lot would have came back, reconnected with Abraham, said, listen, thank you so much for not allowing me to be uh, uh, held captive. Thank you for rescuing my family. Thank you for rescuing my goods. I appreciate it. I want to serve your God. I want to, I want to be reconnected. It was the hand of God that used you to save my life. But it's interesting that after he is delivered, he never is mentioned until chapter 19. It is interesting that after he's rescued, you see no gratitude. A after he's rescued, there's no thanksgiving. After he's rescued, there's no worship. After he is rescued, there's no appreciation. After he is rescued, there's not even a thank you that is recognized in the text. The problem is, uh, and, and you see this, uh, that, that, that there's no sign after Adam, uh, Lot got rescued that he honored God in light of his rescue. This is the problem many times in kingdom community. You have a lot of people in them with the spirit of Lot that within uh, that have no respect for leadership, are not truly committed to the covenant with God or man. And so the, it, we're living in a time where there are a lot of people who demonstrate the spirit of Lot. They, they want the benefits and the protection of the kingdom, but they don't want to serve and honor the kingdom. They, they want the kingdom to be there for their rescue, but when they get rescued, they don't want to have any allegiance or any commitment to the kingdom. Watch this. Abraham is seen once this is over. Now, now here Abraham is. He went and got his nephew Lot out of this predicament, but after that, we still see Abraham being what? Consistent. We see Abraham being committed. We see Abraham being responsible. We see Abraham taking on the responsibility and still engaging in his relationship with God. 
Abraham is seen honoring God, resisting the temptation to be influenced by the king of Sodom. He tells the king of Sodom, I'm, I'm not keeping anything. You're not going to ever say that you made Abraham rich. He stays connected to his covenant that he has made with God, resisting the influence of the king of Sodom, offering up worship with tithes of all the spoils and receiving the blessing of the high priest. So now Abraham does what? He stays consistent. Lot does what? He stays consistent with his character. You see the fact that Abraham comes back. And the first thing Abraham does when he come back from that victory is give God the glory. The first thing he does is honor God's word. The first thing he does is he finds the high priest and he makes a gift of tithes and offerings. He comes in his appreciation to God for the blessings of God in his life. It's amazing that it didn't say Lot showed up. Where's Lot at? Abraham is back where he's always been. He's there in a place of worship. We see Abraham building altars. We see Abraham making sacrifices. We see Abraham worshiping God continuously. We see him honoring God even with his imperfections and the mistake of having a child with a handmaid in Hagar. We see uh, Abraham committed and consistent to his worship. See, this is one thing about covenant people and when you're in kingdom community you just, you gotta understand Abraham was consistent in building his altars. You have to be consistent in building your altars not just when trouble comes but as a relationship as a lifestyle we have to be consistent in building a relationship. He was consistent in his sacrifice he was consistent in his worship Notice that he didn't worship God as a result of the victory. He was worshiping God before he ran into his enemies. He was worshiping God after he had conquered his enemies because his worship was a lifestyle. And so here's the deal. We don't want to worship God just when crises show up. The same one of us that was worshiping God before this situation showed up, guess what? We're still worshiping God today. We didn't stop worshiping God. We was worshiping him before COVID. We was, and we're going to be here worshiping God after COVID. Why? Because our worship is not conditional. Our worship is consistent. Just like Abraham continued to build altars, the people of God that are in covenant with God, that are in community with God, we're going to keep worshiping. We're going to keep giving. We're going to keep serving. We're going to keep honoring God. We're going to keep loving God. Why? Because our relationship with him is based on a covenant and we're going to keep our covenant commitment to him. Some people only come to God when they're afraid. Some people only come to God in crisis. Some people only call on the name of God when there's a bad situation. But notice Abraham. He was consistent even in his victories. He was consistent in his worship. We see him consistent commitment to worship and his relationship with God. On the other hand, Lot name is not mentioned one time in the text after his deliverance. Notice there's no indication that Lot ever came back and said thank you. There's no indication that Lot ever came back to Abraham and committed. There's no indication that Lot ever came back and said Thank you, or I appreciate you. His name is not mentioned again until he's already in Sodom and Gomorrah. You would have thought that after all God had done for him and his family, you would have thought after being able to be with a covenant man, you, 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 you would have thought after seeing how God was blessing Abraham and Abraham's family, Lot would have came to his senses and said, I'm going back to kingdom community. I'm going back and get connected with God's pet power is. I'm, I'm going to connect where God's covering is. I'm going to connect with the safety of the kingdom is but you don't see it you don't see Lot again until he's getting ready to get back in trouble 
some people, no matter how God blessed them, no matter how much mercy and grace God has shown them, they just don't get it. They, get, they call on God when they get in trouble, and as soon as the trouble is over, they go right back to the things they were doing before they got in trouble. Lot does not have one clue about having a relationship with God, but thank God, Abraham does. So because Abraham's relationship with God, now listen to me, because of God's relationship with God, he warns Abraham of the certain destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Because Abraham was in a right relationship with God, even before God was getting ready to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, God came and spoke to Abraham about it. That's the powerful thing about having a relationship with God. And all that we see Abraham committed to God, even Abraham himself becomes the intercessor on behalf of Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, here's the wonderful thing I love about Abraham. His relationship was so great with God that not only did he want to ever see his family destroyed, he didn't want to see anybody destroyed. He went to God and said, uh, Lord, if I can find five just people in Sodom and Gomorrah, would you withhold your destruction? I want you to understand something today. I want you to understand that it is covenant people. It is praying people. It is worshiping people. It is people that are seeking in the face of God and have a relationship with God that's standing in the gap for you and your family. There, there has to be somebody that's going to stand in the gap and pray for you and, and cover you in prayer and, and hold back the hands of the enemy over your life. Abraham became that intercessor and God honored his intercession because of his relationship with God. And I'm going to tell you something. Uh, I believe God is honoring the prayers of his people. I believe God is honoring the prayers of those that are in his community. I don't believe this. We're seeing uh, what uh, we could have been seeing because the saints are praying because there are people that are standing in the gap and not only we're standing in the gap for ourselves but we're standing in the gap for our neighborhoods we're, we're standing in the gap for our communities we're standing in the gap for our loved ones we're standing in the gap for those that have a relationship with God and more so for those that don't let me tell you something God has a remnant of people that are praying God has a remnant of people that are committed God is it has a remnant of people that are worshiping God, has a remnant of people that are standing in the gap, holding back the wrath of God, holding back the works of the enemy, holding back the powers of darkness. You may not understand it. Lot didn't understand it. Lot didn't have a clue that somebody was standing in the gap on behalf of him, praying and believing God so that the enemy would not be able to destroy Lot and his family. Notice this in Genesis 19.1. And there came two angels to Sodom at even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, arose to meet them and bowed himself with the face toward the ground. Now, okay, so, so now we ain't, we ain't heard from Lot since he got out of trouble. You know, some people, you don't hear from them after they get out of trouble. As long as they're in trouble, they need you, they, they, you can find them. But as soon as they get out of trouble, they disappear. Well, we, we haven't heard from Lot in a while. And then in the 19th chapter of Genesis, we see him again. Where is he? Lot is right back in Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, now get this. He was in the plains of Sodom and Gomorrah when he got captured and when his family was taken hostage. Now, instead of getting closer to Abraham, he's already inside Sodom and Gomorrah. Who is the first people the angels run into when they get ready to go into Sodom and Gomorrah? You don't have to guess. His name is Lot. Where's Lot? Sitting in the gate of Sodom. Lot sitting there engaged he's not moving closer to God it seems as though he's moving further away from God 
After all that God has done for him, it seems that his heart is still not connected to God. So if it had not been for the prayers and the covenant of Abraham, Lot would have been destroyed a long time ago. Look at this. And Lot, seeing them, rose up and went out to meet them. Well, at least he had sense enough to know who the man of God was. At least he recognized when he saw them who they were. And Lot said at the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them and bowed himself with his face towards the ground. And he said, Behold, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house. Now, he even calls himself a servant. See, Lot never really was committed to God. Lot, as we see him, is an opportunist. He, he knows how to leverage the situation to his benefit. And so, not that he was loving God, but because of the benefits, he says, I pray you come into your servant's house and tarry all night. Wash your feet and rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, neighbor, we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly that they turned in unto him and he entered into his house and made them a feast and did break unleavened bread and they did eat. And so now here the angels are getting ready to go into Sodom and Gomorrah for sudden destruction. Lot has been insured uh, and snared into the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and not even aware of the danger he and his family of in. He doesn't even understand being outside of kingdom community puts his life and his families at great uh, uh, at a great disadvantage. He doesn't even realize his survival is predicated on Abraham's covenant with God. Now, now, now Lot has been in this place all this time. Never turned to God. Still on the outside of kingdom community. But listen to this. The Bible says that, and it came to pass, chapter 19, verse 29, it said, and it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham. That God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot dwelt. You, you have to understand this is so powerful because God did not save Lot because of Lot. The Bible says that God uh, remembered Abraham. And guess what? You better know today that you've got people that are in covenant with God that are holding back the wrath of God over your life, that are holding back the destruction of the enemy from your life. You got people that are staying faithful and committed to God. Why? Because God's mercy and because God's grace has been extended to you so that you will have an opportunity to come back to kingdom community. You have to understand that God's, uh, what people call it slackness is just God's long suffering. It's just God saying, I'm going to have mercy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to allow my grace to be extended to you. I'm not going to allow you to be destroyed because somebody is praying for you today. Listen, I don't know where you may be today, but I'm saying to you, you better know that somebody has been putting prayers up. Somebody has been uh, consistent uh, even when those of us have been strayed away and walked away from the kingdom of God, there are still people standing in the presence of God, standing on your behalf, praying for you, covering you in prayer, covering you and believing that you're going to make your way back. You know what? God's hand of mercy is over your life because he wants you to make your way back. Don't do like Lot and keep running in the opposite direction direction. Don't be a lot that just cannot hear and understand that God is after you to protect you and to love you and to care for you, to save you, to restore
restore you and redeem you. Don't be like Lot who instead of growing to God, he ran further away from God. You got to understand that God, because of Abraham's prayers, because of God, Abraham's relationship with God, even when Lot was not willing to do the right thing, it was the prayers and the intercession of Abraham that covered Lot and kept Lot from being destroyed. I want you to understand that Jesus has put his kingdom in the midst of the earth. And for even those that despise the kingdom, even those who don't honor the kingdom of God, for even those that uh, don't, don't honor God's authority, his mercy and his grace is extended to you because of his church. See, you have to understand something. It is because of the kingdom. It is because of the kingdom community that God's mercy and grace is extended. It's not by any goodness of our own. You, you, you're not still here. You, you're not still being blessed because of you. You're being blessed because of God's purpose, God's plan, and God's community. God's got people who are standing in the gap for you, praying for you. And guess what? Even when you don't want to hear it, even when you're being hard-headed, even when God, your, your heart has been hardened towards God, God has a people that are praying for you. Give, and God has given you a chance to get it together. God gave Lot chance at the chance at the chance at the chance to get it together. Lot ultimately made the wrong decision, ran up into the mountains, and ended up being a country called uh, a people called Moab. Uh, he he his wife. In, 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 in escaping, turned around and became a pillar of salt. L listen, God is not trying to destroy you. God is trying to save you. God is not trying to, to get rid of you. God is trying to get you into a place where you can hear his voice. And you have to understand something. Even in this COVID situation, it's not God trying to destroy you. It's not God trying to hurt you. God needs through this situation to get your attention so that he can bring you back into the kingdom of God. He wants to bring you back into the ark of safety. He wants to bring you back into a place where there's healing and, and there's safety and there's restoration and there's mercy and there's grace and that, that God can restore you and to, and to give you the peace and the joy that you can't have uh, without him. And so in this situation, I'm just begging you to let God speak to you. I'm, I'm, I'm saying let God I deal with your heart. I, I'm not asking you to be perfect, but I'm asking you to get back to God. I'm not asking you to cross all the T's and dot all the I's, but get back in the house of God. Get back in the community where God's love and power is prevalent and where God can minister to your life and turn it around and get you back into the place you want to be. At this point, God is warning us. God is calling us. God is trying to reach us and Give us an opportunity to hear his voice. He said, the day you hear my voice, hard not your heart. The day you hear my voice, open up your heart and I'll come in. I'll sup with you and I'll give you the peace that you need. Uh, this, this, this situation that we're dealing with is teaching all of us that the bottom line is without God, we can do nothing. Without God, all we can do is fail. So guess what? God has given all of us an opportunity to be restored, to be redeemed, to come back into right relationship with him, to rejoin his kingdom community, and to serve and to operate and function in his kingdom so that he can ultimately bless us. Because at the end of the day, God's will and God's purpose is going to be fulfilled. I want to pray for some of you today. I want to believe God for those of you that might be watching for the first time. Those of you that may not be in kingdom community. Those of you that may have liked Lot 
took God for granted and took his kingdom for granted and drifted away from God, that you would re rethink today that we love you. We're standing in the gap for you today. We're praying for you that you will come into a relationship with God. Receive his grace. Receive his mercy. Receive his love. I want to pray with you. If you're watching, if you, you have backslidden, you have gotten away from God, you've drifted from your relationship with God, or maybe you've never really had a relationship with God like you desire, I want to pray with you today. Would you pray with this prayer with me? Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins wash me in your blood and cleanse me from all unrighteousness I believe that Jesus Christ the son of the living God died on the cross rose again for me and I invite you Jesus into my heart to be my Lord and my Savior I want to be in a covenant with you and I want you to be in covenant with me Thank you today for coming into my heart, for coming into my life and restoring me back to the kingdom. So many people, and I was preaching it before COVID. I was talking about it before COVID. So many people have gone their own way. Some pe so many people have said the church is not relevant anymore, that we don't need to be in church. We don't need the kingdom of God. We got our own relationship, God. We, we're going to do it our way. But God said, no, I'm going to stand here in my mercy and my grace. God's going to deal with our hearts. God's going to deal with our minds. And somehow many of us, like the prodigal son who went away to a strange country, who, who did all the things that we could do, woke up one day in a pig spin and said, the Bible said he came to himself and he said, I'll get up and I'll go to my father's house and I'll just be a servant in my father's house. Listen, I want you to get back into the kingdom. As soon as this COVID thing is over, I want you to get back to kingdom. We're praying for you. We're standing in the gap for you. We're believing God with you.